you can. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Superintendent Paul Z. Bath, Gold Coast District Police. Uh, day six of the Gold Coast Schooly event uh, has uh, been completed, and um, what we've seen overnight is uh, of significance is that uh, for a Wednesday night, this has been the quietest night on a Wednesday night in the last five years. So much so that uh, arrests, uh, as far as they're an indicator, have dropped by 40% on the five year high. Uh, that's for the Wednesday night. Overall, the arrests for the entire event are down 44% to the week to this point. We did have an unfortunate incident overnight, of course. There was a scuffle uh, following a disturbance uh, in the hub area. Uh, police assisted security to uh, uh, move on a couple of people and a uh, arrest has ensued. Uh, that's developed into a number of other young people becoming involved and as a result seven people were arrested, six males and one female. Uh, six of those uh, were registered as schoolies uh, and had wristbands. The main perpetrator of that was charged with just a street offence of public nuisance and obstruct police. Uh, other than that disturbance, uh, the night was actually uh, fairly um, steady and uh, with our partners and volunteers uh, the, uh, on the beat myself last night uh, for my observations, intoxication and disorder were uh, as indicated by the arrest figures uh, well down on previous years. And you say that, um, yeah, that it was the quietest in five years, would you attribute that to the poor weather? Uh, well, until uh, the Weather didn't really change until uh, later in the evening. And to, in the early hours of uh, the event, it was all fine weather. In actual fact, it was quite warm last night, uh, quite muggy. And uh, in our experience in the past, the warmer the conditions uh, often results in more intoxication. But uh, we're pleased to see intoxications were still uh, at a uh, acceptable level. The um, uh, evening itself, other than that one incident, as, uh, was a fairly routine night. Um, I had the uh, uh, good fortune of being on the 19th floor with the Schoolies Command um, with our Department of Communities colleagues when that uh, disturbance didn't uh, eventuate. And what was really pleasing to see that the first responders, uh, one of them was one of our senior commanders, an inspector of police from the North Coast, uh, and he's offside, an acting senior sergeant from Southport, who were doing an inspection of the hub area when they came across this disturbance, uh, were able to intervene early. Um, from the 19th floor, what was really good to see, as I spoke to the uh, police command section at the same time, was the uh, rapid response of the high visibility policing. Uh, the police coming through the crowd in the high visibility vests were easy to see. Uh, our command were able to track our people using their GPS trackers and get the closest units to attend to that area. So the rapid response and early intervention probably uh, made sure that that incident didn't escalate. Superintendent, you're saying seven arrests in that brawl inside the hub and six were schoolers, so there was one non school inside the hub? There were six, uh, seven arrests at that uh, disturbance. Uh, the arrests, of course, happened outside of the hub area, so we're unable to attribute uh, whether or not all those persons were inside at the time. However, the one perpetrator who was, uh, was a schoolie um, was arrested uh, as he was leaving the hub after a disturbance. Um, was that the reason why the hub was closed down earlier, one of the stages? No, no. The, look, the hub, uh, the hub uh, staging, if you like, and the, the, uh, the closing, there's the two stages there. It's quite common that, uh, depending on numbers, that we will close uh, with our partners, of course, make a joint decision to close uh, one of the stages down a little bit earlier than the other. But we've got a fairly um, uh, good routine. Midnight's the close off, and uh, that's, the, uh, that's the time we aim for. So that all the young people get used to that routine and Basically, it's uh, working well because they all start to head back to their apartments uh, at the same time every night. The same that arrests are down, but there's quite a tension in the air last night. And if not for the large police presence, there may have been many more scuffles or many near misses. Do you think there's a particular reason for that tension in the air and the the, the aggressive feeling that people may have? Come from my observations on the beat, um, uh, I was in my experience, 11 schoolers I've done now. Uh, of the arrest figures, uh, the number of disturbances we had, uh, are reflective of what I see as a, a relatively uh, a good night. Um, we're no strangers to disturbances in Surface Paradise from time to time. We've got 106 licensed venues within about five or six blocks there. Uh, our Drink Safe Precinct uh, is been working well, but we do see disturbances where there are a group of people, and some of them are unfortunately affected by alcohol. Um, in this occasion, um, uh, I would say that intoxication levels are still well down on previous years and certainly in my observations um, the event itself or the operations, uh, our safety response to the event uh, aren't seeing any particular uh, 
spikes in intoxication or disorder. You said the schoolies are going back to um, their hotel rooms. Does that mean, you know, earlier than, I guess, I don't know whether previously, but um, does that mean that they're making their own fun in their hotel rooms, drinking more and, you know? Look, I can't really comment on uh, what's occurring inside the apartments, but mm -hmm. um, uh, what I do see is the, uh, the policing response and the safety response, particularly in the public places. And uh, from that perspective, um, uh, the safety response is going very well. And what was pleasing to see um, last night were the volunteers and security and our other uh, partners in ambulance and uh, other areas, the SES, working hand in hand uh, to keep the young people safe. It seems that some schoolies have been arrested twice two nights. What we do do is uh, we look at bail conditions uh, to uh, stop people coming back into surface paradise where it's appropriate. For example, in the unfortunate uh, serious assault on our police officer from uh, night five, mm -hmm. uh, the 24-year-old woman from surface paradise appeared in court yesterday and she's got a bail condition of not to return to the drink safe precinct which is basically the surface mm -hmm. paradise of uh, uh, surface paradise CBD. Uh, prior to her court appearance on the 12th of January. So we do use bail conditions as a tool to keep people out of surface paradise. Uh, young people should be aware that if they do get a bail condition uh, where they uh, want to return to surface paradise, that of course means they can't return to their accommodation, which means they're going to have to go home. Uh, we do use that tool on a, a, a relatively frequent basis, but it depends on the circumstances. But I can guarantee you that anyone that's um, arrested for an offence of violence, such as uh, the assault on that police officer of, of the previous night, uh, will find themselves getting a bail condition not to return to service paradise, and will find themselves uh, police putting an application in for a banning order which might mean that they're actually banned from returning to surface paradise between, for example, six to 12 months. And that would apply to schoolies as well? That would apply to any person uh, who's potentially committed some offence of violence, and a serious assault against police does, of course, uh, constitute that. Because it looks like some certain groups of schoolies are continually causing the problems night after night. We, um, from time to time, there will be some people that will draw attention to themselves. And the other thing we use, if we do see uh, people that are continuing to cause the service, so we use move on directions under the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act. And it's simply that we can give an official direction for people to leave a particular place for a period of time. Uh, that's another tool we do use and where we do find people that are continually uh, annoying others and becoming a public nuisance, we use the move on directions in addition to our arrest powers. So move on directions uh, are a requirement, people must comply with those directions if they don't they can be arrested. Um, if they do commit any offence of violence, we will be putting bail conditions against them not to return to surface. If they commit an offence of violence, we will apply for a banning order, which might mean six to 12 months banning from surface paradise. Just back on that point about the hub superintendent, <coughs> uh, that brawl was around 11.30 and that was the end of dancing on that stage. So is it fair to say that that incident led to the early closure of that recital of the hub? Uh, not at all. The, um, that uh, disturbance, if you like, um, really didn't contribute to that. It probably uh, refocused our, uh, our resources for a short while, but there was a rapid response there and it was wrapped up in a, a short space of time. And uh, can I say, looking from the 19th uh, floor over, seeing the arrest there, they were done in a very professional manner, and particularly by senior officers, which was good to see. How did that fight start? Do you know what, you know, what sort of oh, exit? Sorry, I can't give you too much more information on that. Um, it is before was the it? courts as well. Could you, say, could you allege that it was alcohol fueled? Or? Oh, I, I couldn't do that, I'm sorry. Um, I know you've got a Queensland to get through, um, but obviously New South Wales schoolies are coming up. Uh, will there be the same sort of police supervision for them planning? Is the planning the same sort of response? Our, um, our policing response uh, is similar in some respects to uh, what we've had this week for week one with the Queensland schoolies. But interestingly, we've got a lot of New South Wales kids here this week as well. Um, our, our partners from uh, communities could probably expand on that a little bit on the actual breakdown. But uh, the operation does change a little bit from Friday night. Uh, the tide does start to turn and we start to get the Queenslanders moving out. We start to get New South Wales kids moving in. And there's a, a changing of the guard, if you like. And Saturday night is predominantly uh, New South Wales and Victorian uh, patrons. The policing operation for us, of course, does change a little bit because the last night of operation of the the hub is Friday night, so the last of our Queensland young people uh, generally will be moving out Friday or Saturday morning. Our policing operation from Saturday onwards uh, simply um, returns to our normal drink safe precinct uh, response with the additional resources of our colleagues from our neighbouring districts and uh, areas.
So what we look at is um, a more of a focus on the nightclubs and licensed venues because the New South Wales kids uh, are generally over 18. The focus is on our normal business, if you like, which is police and licensed areas, 106 of them in uh, the drink safe precinct, and making sure that we look at uh, simple things like uh, IDs. Uh, anyone who still uh, uh, is 17, uh, commits an offence if they try and enter a licensed premises with a false ID, $300 fine for example. Um, the big thing for us is New South Wales and Victorian people aren't uh, quite used to the laws in relation to drinking in the streets in Queensland. It is an offence to drink in any public place in Queensland unless it's specifically signed, which is a little bit different from the other states. Young people need to be aware that even if you are over 18, if you're drinking in a public place, it's an on-the-spot $100 fine. Um, if you're asked to leave a licensed premises because of your intoxication or any other reason, it's a $225 fine to um, fail to leave. Um, using a false ID to enter a licensed premises is a $300 fine. Uh, a common thing we do get is that people share IDs and one young person might give their ID to another younger person so they can get into a nightclub. club. To share your ID with someone else for that purpose is a $500 on the spot fine. Which tension between New Zealand schoolies and Australian schoolies um, are simply stirring up the crowd a bit with some arrests last night? Sorry. Uh, look, uh, I don't see there's any particular um, particular issues with any particular groups. Um, what we do find is that um, often kids simply hang together because um, that's the school group that they've come from. Um, uh, there are often small groups of uh, kids from all over the place, and I'm not sure we'll find the same with New South Wales and Victorian kids, they'll come up as groups. Uh, we often find the same with uh, 18 plus events such as the end of season football tours. Uh, the footy teams simply hang out together, and uh, from time to time there are groups of young people that do hang out, and that's not surprising. I know um, you've touched on before about making them aware of the different laws, but any other advice or just general advice for the New South Wales schoolies? Any message you'd like them to realise before they come here? The, uh, the only other um, a bit of advice I would like to pass on to, uh, to young people who are attending is the um, synthetic cannabis and of course the fake ecstasy uh, pills as they are sometimes marketed. And uh, thanks to the vigilance of some of the people uh, in the media, uh, we've made some further inquiries in relation to some uh, people selling pills that purport to be energy pills. However, um, as a precaution, we seized eight, we executed a search warrant yesterday on a New South Wales businessman operating in Surface Paradise and seized 8,000 uh, what uh, are alleged uh, by that person to be energy pills. However, we've seized those and we're having them forensically examined to determine whether they contain any of the banned substances that have recently been added to the schedule. Uh, if, of course, they do contain those banned substances, uh, those 8,000 pills uh, could be alleged uh, to have been uh, part of a, uh, uh, a number of other pills which have been sold in the surface paradise area. And, of course, trafficking in a uh, dangerous drug carries a 15 to 20 year uh, imprisonment penalty. So we do remind the young people from New South Wales and, indeed, our young Queensland people that we are vigilant. Uh, people selling herbal tablets uh, or tablets purporting to give natural highs uh, often do contain dangerous chemicals and dangerous drugs which may uh, cause illness, uh, unconsciousness, unconsciousness, vomiting, seizures uh, and some of these things are often made by uh, crooks in unhygienic conditions using a number of dangerous chemicals. So the message is simply this, if someone offers you pills purporting to have uh, some type of natural high or purporting to mimic the effects of other illicit drugs, they will be illegal, they will be dangerous, don't risk it. If one of your friends ingests one of those tablets and they become ill, call triple zero. Make sure you tell the ambulance what they've had. If you've got any of the other pills left over, make sure you hand them over. Um, the safety of young people is paramount and our New South Wales people coming to Queensland need to know that part of our strategy to reduce alcohol and drug related violence and harm in surface paradise is also to crack down on intoxication, crack down on the use of illicit drugs, crack down on the use of synthetic drugs. So the laws are different in New South Wales that to our, us, aren't they, the synthetic drugs? Uh, the laws are different in different states. However, we need to um, reinforce that when you're in Queensland, do what the Queenslanders do, and that is uh, obey the laws. Don't take drugs that are illegal. Don't take uh, substances that are purported to mimic the effects of illicit substances because the chances are they will contain dangerous drugs and you could not only be uh, risking your health, but unfortunately due to drug or alcohol intoxication, you may become a victim or a perpetrator of crime. And to this point, 
Uh, we haven't had uh, <coughs> any serious uh, crimes involving young people this week, and we'd like to keep it that way. Are you expecting a lot of New South Wales people this year, or have you got anecdotals of evidence that's going to be not as big? Look, it, it, it's a different environment. Um, it, it's, uh, it becomes more of a, um, a policing operation for the CBD and the nightclub precincts. Um, our focus, of course, uh, is keeping all of our young people safe and keeping the drink safe precincts safe. The bonus we have this year is we've been doing high visibility, early intervention policing, which means police on the beat, in the clubs, checking people out, making sure they're not intoxicated for 12 months continuously now since last school leave. We've put nearly 12,000 hours of extra policing into educating licensees and our partners in the community, working with our chill out zone partners, working with our Department of Communities and Officer Liquor and Gaming regulation. From our point of view, uh, we will expect an influx of young people in the CBD. It's a different operation. Uh, the tide turns tomorrow night. But um, overall, um, we will have this, a similar policing response, a safety response that we've had this week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.